me years ago if I thought I'd be a landscape painter, I would have said probably not. It wasn't something I ever thought uh, I'd be drawn to. Um, but more often than not, I think um, you know your influences and your ideas seem to sync up in life. Uh, sometimes you don't even mean for it to. It just happens. Um, and I say that because I, I grew up in South Florida, and uh, later I moved to uh, New England, and I was up there for a while. And when I moved back to South Florida, I was in Miami uh, for grad school. And I started looking at this place that I was from and how bizarre it was. <laughs> Such a strange place, uh, the way that we manipulate uh, the world around us. So a lot of my paintings have to do with you know, man-made elements in nature, and that, that collision that happens, uh, and the way that we transform nature, and at times idealize nature. Uh, so I started looking at, at things like swimming pools, and I started looking at golf courses. I grew up on a golf course, and I started looking at um, you know, all kinds of weird things, just weird trash found on the side of the street, and, uh, lots of stuff that was just kind of bizarre. Even the, the medians in South Florida, the medians in the road that separate two roads or at a red light or something are decorated. Okay, there's these kind of artificial landscapes that exist in these tiny little weird spots all over. And, uh, you know, sort of kind of questioning, you know, what is this environment that we're creating for ourselves? Um, so as a paint, as a landscape painter, as a painter, these were really wonderful things to work with. Uh, formally, you know, you've got wonderful soft areas and hard edges kind of existing in the same space and trying to work them out. Um, it also allowed me to kind of work with, you know, classical motifs with a lot of romantic painterly gesture and combining it with flat um, modernist planes. And I found that a very interesting challenge as well for myself. Um, so that's, I mean, really what it kind of boils down to for me is, you know, these formal elements uh, and then working with, uh, you know, an abstract kind of uh, approach to landscape. Um, I've gone from very organic um, to more industrial. Um, and this body of work developed during my um, thesis project in, um, at Lesley University in Boston. Um, I entered the program looking at um, family history and doing objects where I was doing prints of, of images that related to family history. And as I went through the program, which was um, an interdisciplinary program, was challenged to incorporate objects and to work with clay differently. Um, so as I began to incorporate other objects with my work, I also began to treat clay as if it was a different type of, of object. Um, all of these, these black clay gears that you see were actually turned on a wood lathe. Um, so I was treating them um, a little bit differently. Um, the clay thread was actual thread soaked with clay slip. Um, the thread fired out and kind of that casting for me. So I was looking at industry in this area, um, textile mills more specifically, um, and just kind of a way of life that no longer exists, and people working with their hands in a different way than I work with my hands. Um, man essentially act, acted as part of the machine to make things in the mill. Um, and I found it really interesting that some objects that I began to, to collect in a, in a haphazard way um, turned into um, a series because these these spindles in particular, you, know, you think of them as part of a machine, but someone actually had to make them. Um, each step was done by hand. Um, so all of these are from abandoned textile mills, and you can see the evidence of the worker who made them. Um, so just kind of looking at man versus machine. Something else I began to notice too is that a lot of my work um, kind of echoed the posture of the body. Um, looking at the gears back there on that shelf and these pieces here, um, some of which were, these are extruded, um, and then those were turned on the wood lathe. Um, but just letting kind of that, the happenstance things happen, um, and then letting the pieces interact with one another to tell part of the story. Instead of putting that literal image on top of the work, letting the work kind of form that, that image and that conversation.